All right, well, good morning, church. Uh, Pastor Will here, and I just wanted to take a moment and address you guys in a very specific season that our church finds itself in, and not just our church in particular, but I would say our country in general. And as we navigate this coronavirus situation, there are a few things, there are a few truths that I believe we need to be reminded of <clears throat> in light of scripture. You know, one of the things that we talk about in a season like this is we talk about that idea of faith over fear. And the thing about that idea of faith over fear is that it's totally biblical, but I think there's another word that we are missing and it's the word facts. That one of the reasons why we can respond with faith over fear is because in scripture, we are given facts. In other words, God doesn't just want us to have blind faith. God wants us to think through the implications of what we are going through. And so when I bring up the idea of facts, um, I just need to make sure that we understand that our, our facts ultimately come from not uh, CNN or Fox News or God forbid, even social media. But what we believe is that our facts come from the word of God. And so what I want to do just for the next few minutes is share with you a few facts that come to us from scripture that will help us to then put our faith over fear. The first fact that I want to share with you is that God is totally and completely sovereign. Look what it says in Romans 8, 28. It says, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. And so what we see here in Romans 8, 28 is that God is completely sovereign and that he works all things for the good of those who love him. And what's beautiful about that word all in the Greek is that it actually means all. And so it includes the coronavirus, that even something as unexpected as the coronavirus was part of God's plan. And uh, yesterday I came across this article that was talking about why people are responding the way they're responding uh, to this coronavirus. And it said that the reason why is because people are, are they're panicking because they, they, they feel like they don't have control. Mm -hmm. There's this feeling of you don't have control. There's this uncertainty. And so you respond to the lack of control, to the uncertainty by trying to control something. And so you go to the to the grocery store and you buy 16 <laughs> packages of, of toilet paper, right? But what's interesting is that the reason why people are freaking out is because they feel like they're not in control. But what we believe and what we see in the passage is that the reality is that we're never actually in control. It's just that there are certain seasons that remind us of that more than others. And so what we as believers need to understand, and the reason why we as believers must respond differently is because what we understand a lot of scripture is that we are never in control. Our God is sovereign over the good things and the bad things, over the valleys and the mountaintops. God is so sovereign in fact, church, that even the fact that we are working our way through Romans 8 in a season like this, only God and his sovereignty could have planned that. He knew that we as a church needed to be working our way through Romans 8 verse by verse in order to navigate this season that we find ourselves in. And so the first fact that I wanna remind you of is that God is sovereign. Now, the second fact that I wanna remind you of in light of scripture is that not only is God sovereign, but God is not surprised. God is not surprised. In Romans 8 verses 19 through 22, here's what it says. It says, for the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been growing together in the pains of childbirth until now. So what we see here is that God is not actually surprised by this coronavirus. And the reason why is because all the way back in Romans chapter eight, and I would even go further back to Genesis chapter three. In Genesis chapter three, when Adam and Eve sinned against God, uh, we always talk about the consequences that it had in our relationships, but creation was equally impacted by the fall of man as everything else was. And so creation itself is longing, it is looking forward to the day when God will redeem the sons of God, his sons, when, when the day when God will, will, will redeem everything and we will be glorified in heaven. And so one of the reasons why we should not be surprised by the coronavirus is because ever since the fall, things like the coronavirus exist, that creation itself is reacting to the sin of man. 
And one of the things that I believe we need to be aware of is that we as Christians can fall into the trap of responding to creation in one of two ways. On the one hand, we can waste creation and underestimate it. But then on the other hand, if we're not careful, according to Romans chapter one, we can worship creation and put it in a place where it shouldn't be. We can overestimate it. But what we see here is that creation is not ultimately the thing we should worship. Creation is one of the things that was impacted by sin and that one day God is also going to restore. And so what we should do is take creation as an opportunity for us to, again, turn our attention not to creation, but to the creator, to the creator and give him the worship and honor that he deserves. What's interesting in a lot of this passage is that in many ways, creation has a better theology than we do. Creation longs for the gospel more than we do. Creation longs for glorification more than we do. So may we take this opportunity to learn from creation and put our eyes and our hope back in Jesus and on Jesus. So the third thing that I want to share with you um, is not only that God is sovereign and not only is God not surprised, but what we see in light of this passage is that God is our only salvation. God is our only salvation. In Romans 8, uh, verses 38 through 39, here's what it says. Paul writes, For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in creation, including the coronavirus, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Man, praise be to God that nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God. Not the economy, not the government, not our uncertainty, uh, not our lack of hand sanitizer, uh, not the coronavirus, nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God. And I pray that we would take this season as a reminder that we would allow this coronavirus to remind us again that our ultimate hope is not found in the creation, but in the creator. And it is because of those three facts that I believe we as a church, that we as Christians should respond differently than the world is responding. If what the Bible says is true, then what that means is on the one hand, we should be encouraged because God is in control and he is still on the throne. But yet on the other hand, we can be expectant because there are going to be opportunities for us as a church to be the church. You know, this morning we might not be at the church, but just because we are not at the church, it doesn't mean that we cannot be the church. And I pray that God will give all of us opportunities to be salt and light and to show that Jesus is the ultimate light and hope of the world. So I pray that that encourages you this morning. And I uh, just want you to know that as your pastor and as our church, uh, we love you and uh, we hope to see you soon. God bless.